So this video, we're going to look at slides 28 through 34, which is the platelets, the thrombocytes. So again, platelets, which is the common name for them, are called thrombocytes. You need to know both of those. Now, you don't need to necessarily know the megakaryocyte, but uh, I would say, <coughs> yeah, it'd be good to kind of have that in the back of your brain. The mega means big. Actually, the uh, thrombocytes, which are the smallest of all of the formed elements, actually originate from the largest of um, the what we call the progenitor cells, the ones that, that work their way down as the uh, stem cell changes. Um, so what happens is this, this uh, stem cell gets stimulated through hormones to start creating some more thrombocytes and as it grows it grows into this big mega karyocyte and then it basically for lack of a better way to say it explodes and all these fragments go out and those little fragments are called platelets or thrombocytes um, the hormone that causes them to uh, to produce uh, the stem cell to produce it is called thrombopoietin we talked about erythropoietin is how it makes erythrocytes and hemato, hematopoiesis is just the simple, it's a word that just simply means the creation of the formed elements of blood cells. Um, this also lacks a nucleus, which means that it is very, uh, very small. Um, there are, uh, we looked at how, much, how many red blood cells are in a, a microliter of blood, a cubic millimeter. Um, and we said that it was, you know, several million. And so this is going to be a lot less, even though they're smaller, they're a lot less. And their whole job is homeostasis, which just means it is involved in stopping bleeding. So when a damaged blood cell is there and there's a, a tear in the lining of it, these help stitch across it and hold it together and stop it from bleeding so our body can repair it. Um, they, re, they release what's called serotonin. You might have heard this. This is sometimes used, you know, it's, it's a hormone, uh, neurotransmitter hormone that can be used in different ways. Uh, but for this, it causes the smooth muscles in the walls of the broken blood vessels to contract. And we're going to look at this in, as we move forward. So this is the types of things that are uh, in the formed elements. There's really three red blood cells called erythrocytes, white blood cells called leukocytes, and there are five types of leukocytes, and then platelets or thrombocytes. Now, the other component of blood is plasma, and this is going to come in with some of the parts of the thrombocytes as we start looking at it. Uh, but plasma, which is 55% of whole blood, again, I uh, remember a whole blood is made up of two components, plasma and formed elements. 55% um, of the whole blood should be plasma, and the majority of plasma, over 90%, is water. Um, some of the other things it's going to have is going to have some organic and inorganic chemicals. The organic chemicals are going to be carbohydrates, pro, you know, building blocks of carbohydrates, building blocks of proteins, and um, nucleic acids and lipids. Uh, Inorganic compounds are, are going to be generally electrolytes. Um, so these are the things that are going to be flowing around in there. Now the plasma proteins, this is a big part. Plasma proteins are going to have three types, albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. Now albumins, the only thing I want you to remember with this is associated with this thing called osmosis. All right, so I'm going to have a video that's going to hopefully kind of do a little review on osmosis. But what happens is albumin is a pretty large protein. And so when the blood goes through the capillaries, you're, as we get into the next chapter and find out how this works, um, hydrostatic pressure or blood pressure pushes the plasma out into the tissues. And that's going to carry oxygen. Now, as the blood goes through the capillary, it will lose more fluid, which means it becomes more osmotically drawing. And so then it'll start pulling the fluid in on the venous side, and now this fluid's carrying carbon dioxide. And it's this osmotic draw because albumin is too big to cross the capillary, so it really helps set up this, this pull to get the fluid back in. Um, 
Now, albumin, you might have heard of this. This is what egg whites are. Egg whites are basically albumin. Now, uh, globulins are a pretty, uh, pretty important little part here. Now, the, these two, alpha and beta, we're going to look at these as we get uh, into the digestive system. Um, you will hear these. Uh, they help transport fats and lipids. Um, remember, our body is mainly water. Anything that is fat-soluble, which is a lipid, um, it can't play well with water. Oil and water do not mix. So we have these special little molecules that surround them and basically form an invisibility cloak to let them uh, move around. Uh, so that's what are going to be the alpha and beta goblins, and I'm not worried about those. I am worried about these. I want you to know about gamma globulins because these are the antibodies. And again, we're going to look at antibodies um, in the lymphatic system, and they're going to be associated with uh, lymphocytes, the, the um, part of the white blood cells. So gamma globulins are antibodies. Now, just a real quick thing, and I, this is it's kind of a stupid little way to remember it, and hopefully it is. Uh, something that will help you. If not, it's not a big deal. But when I'm studying this, when I was a student, um, I like Spider-Man. I like comic books back in the day, a long time ago. I liked a lot of different things, but Spider-Man was all I always thought was cool when I was a little kid. And um, the bad guy in Spider-Man was the gob, one of the bad guys, one of the many, was Goblin. And he would ride around on that little glider, and he was kind of the bad guy. Now, in my body, the antibodies are kind of these special little uh, hunter killer jets. They go around and fly throughout my body like the Air Force looking for any bad guys. And so I could remember that the antibodies, because they were flying around looking to protect me, instead of being a bad guy, the goblin, it is a globulin, which is a good guy. The other thing is they kind of were like little hulks driving around because when you start looking at these, they're, it's amazing what they do. And if you know anything about the Incredible Hulk, uh, it was gamma radiation that caused David Baxter, Dr. Baxter, to turn into the Hulk. And so I kind of tied those two together in my work little mind, and it helped me remember gamma globulins were the antibodies. Now, in this first test, this might be one question, but there's a lot of stuff that's going to come up about antibodies for sure in the lymphatic system. So I want to kind of point that out. Now, the next one is called fibrinogen, and this is another word thing that you need to know. If I draw a little line here, O-G-E-N generally means precursor. Uh, sometimes there's a prefix called pro that we're going to look at that means precursor as well. But if you see a word that has O-G-E-N in it, generally what it's telling you is it is a precursor of whatever is in front of it. So if I wipe out O-G-E-N, fibrinogen is the precursor for fibrin. And we, later on in this video, we're going to look and see how fibrin helps stop uh, bleeding and that's what a big part is it says here plays a role in blood coagulation so fibrinogen uh, is a precursor to fibrin all right so gases and nutrients that are flowing around in our in our plasma are, are very important obviously these two are very important oxygen is needed to be taken to my cells uh, to give them energy so my cells become happy uh, when, when oxygen is in there, they are happy, and as they break down glucose, part of the byproduct is carbon dioxide, so carbon dioxide flows through to get rid of, so that's the cycle that's going on. Now, I can't stress enough, it is important to understand the building blocks of the, um, of the organic compounds, and this is them. Amino acids, they're the building blocks of proteins. Simple sugars, monosaccharides, building blocks of carbohydrates. Main one is glucose, and you need to know that. Nucleotides, building blocks of nucleic acids. That's RNA, DNA, and ATP. Pretty important molecules in our body. And then lipids. This is going to be fats, triglycerides. We're going to, you know, we'll do a little refresher course on what triglycerides are and the building blocks. Phospholipids. These are the little um, things that help make the cell walls. They're the little, uh, the little uh, fat molecules that have a hydro. Uh, 
uh, philic head, that means they like water, and then hydrophobic tails that help make up the cell wall, or the cell membrane, I should say, cell walls are in plants. Uh, anyway, and then the other one is cholesterol. Now, everybody gets a bad idea. Cholesterol, every one of your fat-soluble hormones uses cholesterol as a base, or I should say lipid-based hormones. It's cholesterol. So these are the things that are going to be flowing around, and again, they're all. If you understand what they are, they all make. They all should make sense. Now, this non-protein nitrogenous substance (NPN) is an important thing in a lot of ways, especially when we look at um, uh, our kidneys and how it, you know, it, it, it reacts with our kidneys. The only thing I want you to know right now: urea is a product of protein catabolism. Now, you should understand that. Catabolism is when I have one substance and I break it down into smaller things. Catabolism is breaking down. Anabolism is building up, right? So when I take a protein and I break it down, part of the uh, waste products is this stuff called urea. Ureic acid, or uric acid, I should say, sorry, is a product of nucleic acid breakdown. And so you do need to know the two ones of these. So protein breakdown is urea and uh, nucleic acid breakdown is uric acid. All right, um, we will talk about creatine and creatinine. You did talk about creatine back in 210 as far as it is a, a chemical that helps uh, our muscles keep a storage of ATP handy. And then finally, uh, this is a test, blood, urea, nitrogen. It is a test that helps us monitor kidney health. Electrolytes, again, electrolytes simply are ions. Uh, they are minerals. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can talk about them. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's basically the... the uh, the breakdown of them, I know they, that goes from different name to different name as it's going through. Uh, the main one is sodium. Of all the things, the main one is sodium. Uh, but calcium's another one. Potassium's a big one, but we don't really talk about it. But uh, calcium's one. This one called bicarbonate is going to be a big deal as we start moving through. We're going to look at this as a buffer system. And again, uh, we'll save that for another time. Um, so sodium and chloride are the most abundant electrolytes. That's a good true-false question to kind of, or, you know, question to kind of keep in the back of your head.